Richie, what do you believe is the greatest opportunity for blockchain technology in pharma? The opportunity for blockchain, uh, or the opportunity for pharma with blockchain, we have to think about it from a continuum of time. We have to think about it probably three to five years, and then maybe 10 to 15, and then post 15, right? If we start from the outside, and we start from post 15, it's, it's very sort of easy to look at it and sort of oversimplify it and say, well, it's about trust. And we have an industry today where, in some ways, we're suffering from an absence of trust. If you think about the relationships between the participants in the industry, as well as some of the ancillary stakeholders around, all the way out to patients, we do have a bit of a trust problem in the industry. But that's post 15 years out. When we think about it immediately, from a three to five year perspective, we have to think about the underlying technology itself. I think most importantly, and I think I for Pharma should be leading these types of conversations, most importantly is to understand the technology first before we run off and start to establish use cases. So there's two things to think about when you think about blockchain. One is, today we live in a world where if you and I were to exchange data with each other, I give you the data and the data comes to you and says, wink, wink, I'm data, you can trust me. And most of the times you don't. You have to go to some sort of intermediary to make sure that it's good. Blockchain allows us to move to a world where I can give you data and you have a very easy and expeditious way to test to know that that data has not been fixed up. This is very, very different for commerce, not just for healthcare, but for all of commerce. To go from, I give you data and you have to go test it, as opposed to I give you data and you know it's good without an intermediary. So you have to start to think about what are those points in the healthcare system where we exchange information with each other and currently we go to an intermediary to validate or verify that data and what it would look like when you take that out. Right? So you could start with very simple examples like the data that comes from a, a clinical trial to a pharmaceutical company or, or a research organization. Or you can think about the data that comes from a pharmaceutical company to the government agencies. And one of the things that I'm noticing is that governments are more interested in blockchain than they were in cloud or in mobile, et cetera. And it's not because the governments want to be on blockchain. It's because they want to apply policy to the industry that says, hey, I'm kind of tired of your Excel files with, with you know, the massaging that happens in there. I want to see your evidence on a blockchain. So that's kind of like three to five years. The second thing about blockchain is that it allows unfamiliar parties to start to trust each other in a different way. Because at the smart contract layer, you can build in rules into the exchange of data that make sure that things happen. So if you think about what IBM is doing with Hyperledger, they're loading up all the industry regulations into the, black, the blockchain uh, software layer using Composer to make sure that the rules are there. So when you see a record written, you know that it already followed the rules. So that now unfamiliar parties that don't have contracts with each other can start to trust the data that is exchanged with each other. Now healthcare is very interesting because we exchange with new parties all the time. Every new trial is a new stakeholder community that you don't have familiarity with, that you have to build familiarity. Every new country is a new stakeholder community of HCPs that you have to build familiarity with. These are the types of things that are gonna change, I think, in the five to 10 year period.